give you a scenario. I know I said earlier I wasn't going to give you guys any situations, but let's say you invite some police officers into your home and they start attacking your child. Are you just going to let them attack your child or are you going to defend your child? Right? When your child has not committed any crime or nothing like that, you're just going to let them start beating your child up, shoot your kid? Probably not. So I believe that, in fact, the castle doctrine applies. Right? So according to the standard ground laws, you are able to retreat when safe to do so. The officer could retreat. She could not. The officer could retreat. She could not. This is not a hit piece. This is not a bash Myron gang video. We're not here to slander the man. We're just here to hold him accountable for certain things he has said in regards to Sonia Massey. Now, what's that thing you like saying, Myron? When people say stupid things, they should be told that they're saying stupid things or something along those lines. To bring bullying back. And I also think we need to go back to telling people they're stupid. We don't tell people they're stupid anymore. That's why people sit, feel so comfortable saying stupid shit. People, oh yeah, I'm like a pseudo intellect. They'll say this. I tell, I make it a point. When girls say something dumb on the pod, I'm like, that was stupid. Oh, that's not yeah, me. Shut, nice. Shut them off. <laughs> yeah, but like, but we need to go back to negatively reinforcing poor decisions or poor statements or things that are dumb. Because when you let people, when you accept everyone, right, and you you let everyone think that they're validated or whatever, they say dumb shit. So we're gonna tell you what you said in regards to Sonia Massey was stupid. You say the shoot was justified, so essentially you're saying she deserved to get shot. The uh, end result of her getting shot was her death. So essentially, you're saying she deserved to die, which is what I took from what you wrote. But let's dive into it, because clearly you did not watch the video in all parts. Clearly, you did not look at the full situation. And I don't know if it's from your disdain or your hatred of the black community or your inability to look past stereotypes or your own preconceived notions within your own head in regards to the black community. I don't know if you're just looking for clicks or engagement on your social media for saying these things, but at the end of the day, a life of an unarmed woman was lost, whether she was black or white, it doesn't matter. However, she was black and her life was taken from her for something that should not have happened in the first place. So let's get into it. And you being a former uh, federal agent, really, when people say there are no good cops, this is what they talk about. You essentially were a cop and you're saying this was justified in no way or shape or form. Can you tell me that you were a good cop and look at this footage multiple times from both angles and say that this was justified or that this actually made sense? When in fact, people who are currently in law enforcement, current lawyers are saying this did not make sense. This was not justified when his own sheriff is saying this did not make sense. When the grand jury said this did not make sense. This was not legal. This was not justified. And you boil it down to because they didn't want to riot or boil it down to woke uh, political stances or ideology. Nah, it's L take, man. We're going to get into it. I'm going to watch this video again for you because obviously you didn't. Now I'm going to put up here on the screen what the uh, Sagamon County State Attorney said in regards to this incident when they indicted him on these charges. It's going to be on the screen here. Bear with me. I'm going to read the full thing. It says, deputies entered Miss Massey's home to gather further information and ensure the residence was safe. At no time was Miss Massey under arrest. Defendant knows the pot on the stove, which is the cop, and approved of Miss Massey to removing the pot to prevent any accidental fires. The pot was located in another room of the home, separate, separated by a large counter. During this time, the other deputy was clearing the house and nothing dangerous was noted. Defendant then made a comment about the pot. Again, the cop mentioned the pot, which apparently contained heated water. Miss Massey responded verbally and set the pot of water down on the counter in the kitchen. During this time, defendant was still in the living room area of the home. He was nowhere near her. Despite his distance and relative cover, defendant drew his 9mm firearm, not, not, not the less than lethal taser located on his duty vest, and threatened to shoot Miss Massey in the face. Seeing the drawn weapon, Miss Massey put her hands in the air and stated, I'm sorry, while ducking for cover behind the counter that separated her and the defendant. The defendant, again the cop, with his firearm still drawn, proceeded to close the significant gap between him and Miss Massey. Defendant then aggressively yelled at Miss Massey to put the pot down. 
Note, she had already put the fucking pot down, Myron. Her hands were in the air. The cop approached her when her hands were in the air with a gun in her face and said, put the pot down. The pot was already down. I'm going to show you guys this in the video from his angle because a lot of you idiots on Twitter have the video slowed down without the audio and say, oh, she did in fact throw the pot at her, at him. However, dumbasses, she in fact had her hands up, no pot in her hand, and the cop was telling her to put the pot down, which in fact made her go and pick the pot back up. But let's continue, okay? Defendant then fired his duty weapon three times in the direction of Miss Massey, striking her in the face one time. Only at this time did defendant activate the body worn camera. Please note the body worn camera of the other deputy was activated when the first when he first arrived on the scene and remained on during the entirety of the events. After this, now this is where I have contention with this video because we do have the other, excuse me, this uh, posting or whatever this guy said because we do have the camera of the other deputies. So I don't know what they mean. He only activated it after the shooting because we have um, the interaction as he, in fact, took her off this planet of Earth. Um, after this, the other deputy announced he was going to retrieve a medical kit from his vehicle to which the defendant instructed him not to because of the severity of the injury the other deputy still rendered aid and stayed with miss massey until medical help arrived defendant at no attack at no time attempted to render aid with massey now myron as we continue you're a federal agent y'all know you've seen police videos i'm sure maybe you've probably been in the shootout at no time have i ever seen a cop shoot as actual sp suspect who's been under arrest, who's even shot at the police, and they not render aid to them. What country, what universe, what Twilight Zone does a police shoot somebody who's not a suspect and decide not to render aid because, oh, that's a headshot. Hey, hey I don't know. You shot this woman who was not under arrest, who had no gun, and you don't want to render aid to her? And then you're saying that was a justified shoot, Myron? What are you talking about? Let's continue. As independent inst investigation defendant's actions were performed by the Illinois State Police, an expert in the field of use of force reviewed the recording made by a body one camera of both deputies. Um, the... Expert concluded that the defendant was not justified in his use of deadly force. He likened the scenario to an officer intentionally and unnecessarily putting himself in front of a moving vehicle and then justifying use of force because of, he was a fear of being struck. Defendant's disregard of his training as a law enforcement officer and his disregard for human life shows by clear and convincing evidence that he is a danger to persons in the community. He has ample access to firearms and has shown a willingness to use lethal force despite the availability of non-deadly alternative when there is little to no threat to his bodily safety. So, Myron, we're doing this like church. I'm sweating now. So, Myron, that is what an independent investigator looked at the body cams and spoke about now i'm not an inve independent investigator i'm not a police officer i'm not a lawyer i don't know too much about what the what that uh sheriff's policies were in regards to their job and working however just by watching that video i picked up on a couple things and let me go ahead and break it down for those of you who did not watch the video. And I'm going to break it down for you too as well, Myron. Because again, this is an L take on your behalf. And you should be ashamed of yourself. I actually was perusing your Twitter. That was some thunder. Now, I actually I was perusing your Twitter to see if you would go back and address those claims that you made. Or that statement that you made in regards to the shooting. But you haven't. And I didn't want to be hasty and drop a video uh, to try to bash you or anything like that. But you haven't. So I'm going to drop this video. So maybe you'll see it. And maybe you'll address it. Because as a fan, I'm a fan of your show, the Fresh and Fit channel. I support a, a couple of you guys' uh, points. And I believe in a lot of things that you say. However, at some point in time, just because I'm a fan doesn't mean I have to totally 100% agree with the things you say or the things that you do. And this is by far one of the ones that I do not agree with. Had you not kicked this all out of the Discord as free members, I would have posted this in Discord. But I'm going to post it online publicly so everybody can see. And hopefully you can see it and address this matter properly right now i don't know if you're going through any financial strain or if you got a lot of stress with all the content you're creating traveling back and forth i don't know but i suggest that you actually look at this and modify your stance or double down who knows but let's get into now i'm not going to create a story 
or try to paint a picture for you guys. I'm just going to go by what's off the video. I know the video is getting long, but please bear with me because it's been on my heart for a couple of days. And I was like, let's go ahead and make the video today. It's Sunday. So reasons why the cop wasn't demonstrated. Uh, reasons why the cop wasn't justified and demonstrated incompetence lack of decency and scorn and in my own personal opinion is in fact a guilty of murder one he in fact knew she was mentally unstable right he asked her if she's unwell okay okay all right you doing all right mentally yes sure my medicine He's making comments. He doesn't believe her that there's somebody around the premises. Somebody keeps outside my house, y'all. Uh, uh, is please. this your car over here? We checked your yard. We walked around the whole block. We didn't see anybody. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, we don't. Like, we checked the whole area. There's nobody out walking please, around. I know, y'all. Please, God. Please, God. I'm trying to get help, y'all. But What do you need help with? Nothing. I just, please, God. Please, God. Please. I don't know what to do. Do with what? Huh? What do you need help with? Nothing. I just wanted to see if I could help me. What do you want help with? Huh? What do you want help with? Huh? I heard somebody outside. Yeah, we checked your house. We checked your backyard. I walked all the way through all these backyards. We checked your front yard. We didn't see nobody. So so. Nobody's out here. You didn't see anybody? Nope. Nope. No. We checked the whole area. Right. And, uh, you know, immediately he thinks that because she's holding hot water that it's a weapon or that could be used as a weapon why would you think that unless you already think or feel that that person is unwell mentally uh, away from your hot steaming water uh, away from my hot steaming water yeah oh i was rebuke you in the name of jesus huh? i rebuke you in the name of jesus you better fucking not i swear to god i'll fucking shoot you right in your fucking face right. so, so he already thought something was off with her he didn't think she was a threat more say because obviously he went inside her home he was standing beside her talking to her but he knew something was wrong up here when he's trying to get her name she didn't know her name what is your last name uh, should not think about your last name uh, right so that's one reason two lack of this deductive skill one the first thing i noticed when i watched this video is she has a hospital bracelet on her right hand Please, uh, please, I don't know what to do. Do with what? Huh? What do you need help with? Nothing. I just wanted to see if I could help me. What do you want help with? Huh? What do you want help with? Uh, I heard somebody outside. Yeah, we checked your house. We checked your backyard. I walked all the way through all these backyards. I'm going to show you guys that in this video right now. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but in my eyes, from what I've dealt with, I've been in the hospital, I deal with mental health patients, I deal with people with mental health, that is definitely a hospital bracelet on her arm. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. So when he's asking her for her name and stuff like that, he could have literally said, hey, let me look at, is this a hospital bracelet on your wrist? Let me look at that, because my eyes, that's a hospital bracelet, right? She can barely remember her name. Clearly, something's going up there wrong with her mentally. So this means you have to take care with these type of people. My parents, we own a an adult daycare and a group home facility. We deal with people who are, you know, on Medicaid, Medicare, some of them who don't have it, deal with schizophrenia, bipolar di disorder, dementia, all this type of stuff where people will have outbursts and may seem violent, but they're just expressing their own emotions, how they express them by no means does this mean we treat them like a regular person in their sane mind and you know treat them aggressively or um with scorn um when they're asking her about the car she initially says the car wasn't hers but then she turned ladies and starts saying the car is hers and talking about the damage on there please, uh, please. is this your car over here please, uh, please, uh, please. Is, is this your car over here uh -uh. oh Please, uh, that's please, not your black car in the driveway? Mm -mm. Oh, well, we checked. That's not your black car, though. The SUV? Mm -hmm. Whose is it? Uh, you don't know? It's someone just parked it in your driveway? Mm -hmm. They brought it to my driveway. And just left it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's run that. Yeah. The house was a terrible mess. A cluttered house means a cluttered mind. Obviously, she's mentally unwell for her to be living in such a state, right? She wanted them. She said, hold on. 
I have papers here. Grab that Bible. What's up? Um, I got some paperwork. Can you grab that Bible, please? Yeah. Hey, I just need your name. Sure, not think about your last name. Okay. You're not in trouble. I just need to text. Huh? Massey. What happened? Yeah. You have an ID that makes things so much easier. Yeah. I, I just need to get just a driver's license will do, and I'll get out of your hair. I want to show y'all my paperwork. I will what? get your paperwork. What paperwork? Okay. I got some paperwork. We'll just get your ID. Real well, let's get your ID first, and then one task at a time. Here. Now, again, in my eyes, seeing that that's a hospital bracelet on her wrist, I believe she was talking about her discharge papers that were in the Bible that she took with her to the hospital. And when she got discharged, she put the papers in her Bible, and that's where she knows where all her information is at because it's on her papers. That's why she wanted to said, hold on, I want to show you these papers. Now, if he was being a deductive cop, he would have said, okay, what are those papers? Those papers have your information on them? Where they're at? Where are where are they? Let me grab that Bible and pull those papers out of there. But he had no time for her. He was trying to rush to get her information, and again showed a complete lack of deductive skills, in my opinion. Right. Three. He lacked patience and understanding with dealing with a victim, and somebody with mental uh, altered mental state. Right. So throughout the video, he demonstrated um, annoyance with the victim, right? He was annoyed, seemed to be annoyed that she called for a potential intruder around her property. That's not how you would treat somebody who has say, hey, there might be a prowler nearby. He's totally annoyed. Well, we looked everywhere, man. We didn't see anybody. There's nobody here. Oh, he was mad that she didn't open up the door fast enough. Like, okay. What took you so long to answer the door? Oh, I was trying to put on some clothes, sir. I'm sorry. Like, what if somebody was attacking her inside and you're mad that she didn't open the door fast enough? Why didn't you open the door when we knocked the first time? What are you talking about? All right? Um, he had visible and audible exasperation for actually having to do his job. That was totally mind-boggling to me. That's not somebody who needs to be on the force. That's not, that's not somebody who needs to be serving the community. Right? Um, and three, he... Come on. He views i rebuke you in the name of jesus as a threat you better not or i'll shoot you in your fucking face what is that yeah oh i rebuke you in the name of jesus huh? i rebuke you in the name of you jesus you better fucking not i swear to god i'll fucking shoot you right in your fucking face right, so what is myron what the fuck is that that's justified what are you what are you talking about like do you hear yourself when you say some things I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You better not. I'll shoot you in the fucking face. What? Hello? Well, let, let's jump a little bit back. Let's let's jump a little bit back, right? She knows the cop moving back away from her, so she's confused. Like, why are you moving back like that? What's, what's going on? Right, and I've dealt with police. When police start doing weird things, I also question them. Or when they say weird things to me, I also push back on them, right? I was just, one time I was working out, and I had literally taken two scoops of pre-workout. So I'm all amped up and jittery. And um, long story short, the cops have approached me. They're like, why are you so hyped up, man? Did you take anything? I'm like, what the? Bro, you just stopped me while I'm working out. What are you talking about? Like, I took pre-workout. Oh, that's some strong pre-workout. Yeah, nigga, the fuck is you talking about? Anyways, so he said, I'm moving away from your hot, steamy water. And she said, oh, you're moving away from my hot, steamy water? And I believe that's the most lucid thing she said that night, right? Because I believe she was dealing, that she was in an altered mental state. But she's like, you're moving away from my hot, steamy water? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. She was basically saying, oh, you're moving away from the hot water because you think I'm going to attack you? You sound dumb. That's basically what she said. But... Because obviously she seems to be a highly religious individual. She's dealing with a mental state. So she's leaning back on her rate, her upbringing of Christian faith. So instead of her saying you sound dumb or that's the stupidest thing that she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Why would I attack you? I called you here to help me. And you better not. I'll shoot you in the fucking face. Come on. Right. He immediately escalated to lethal force, as you heard in the document from the independent uh, third party reviewers who looked at both body cams. 
why did he pull out his gun and then close the distance? Make it make sense, right? Uh, he used lethal deadly force on a as a mean of means of compliance on the non-combatant, non-threatening individual. Now again, she was never under arrest. Myron, never under arrest. She never threatened the officers. Yet she immediately had a gun in her two guns in her face, demanding her compliance in her own home. That doesn't make sense, nor does it jive with the law. Right? He used deadly force on an innocent victim on the situation he created. They created that situation. If they viewed hot water to be such a danger, then why would they tell her, hey, go get that pot off the stove? If you view it to be such a danger, why not just go to turn it off yourself? You're already in her house. You could ask her permission. Hey, can I turn this hot water off real fast? Just so nothing up. But you tell her to go turn it off and then shoot her when she does. Come on. And then he did not give her any verbal commands to ensure his safety. All he said was, you better fucking not. I'll shoot you in the fucking face. Put the pot down. Not once he said, put your hands up. Not once he say, step back. Not once he say, get on the ground. Not once he say, uh, put your hands in the air. I said that already, but he didn't say none of that. Not once he say anything to make sure he was safe. He just pulled his gun out, aiming at her, telling her to put the pot down after she put the pot down. And I'll show you guys that video here in a second. He put himself in harm's way twice. Right. Let's say let's say she did have a a, a, a a proclivity to throw this hot water at him. Let's say she, in fact, had a gun. Right. He moved towards her, not away. He didn't seek cover. He didn't duck and dodge. He moved towards the supposed threat. Make that make sense. You're police officer Myron or you were. When somebody has a gun aimed at you, do you go towards the gun or do you seek cover and aim your gun? Do you seek cover and aim? Or do you like put the gun down and run towards them? No, I've never seen that happen, nor does it make sense. So how can you say that this was justified and not murder? Oh, so you said, oh, hot water is a deadly weapon. So you move towards a deadly weapon and then... You're mad that you're in the line of sight or line of fire of a deadly weapon because you put yourself right directly in front of it, right? And then second, he was so amped up to shoot this lady, he jumped in front of his partner who also had his gun out. And drop the fucking pot! Drop the fucking pot! Drop the fucking pot! Shots fired! Shots Now imagine if there was in fact this woman had a gun and was shooting at them. He would have got shot and his partner would have shot him in the back or the him and his partner could have got shot because his partner couldn't see the lady because he was in front of him. So what kind of police training or what kind of buffoonery did we witness? And you said it was justified. Well, I'll put the video up right now. He jumps in front of his partner's gun. His partner could have been shooting. He would have got shot in the back from his partner because he was overzealous. He was not in fear of his life. He was not in fear of getting hurt or in any danger when he jumped in front and moved towards the supposed threat. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. And then finally, he refused to render aid to the victim. Remember, she was never under arrest. She was never... Uh, under suspicion of committing a crime. She was never a threat. She called the police there to help her. He didn't render aid to the woman that he shot in the face because he said, oh, that, hey, that's a headshot. She dead. I'm going to go get my kit. No, your head's not dead. She's done. You can go get it, but that's a headshot. That's not how things work. He's not a medical professional. He can't diagnose death. That's not his job. Even EMTs aren't allowed to do that. If an EMT gets somebody who's shot in the face, they have to render aid all the way up until they get them to the, to the hospital and then the doctor pronounces them dead on arrival. But the job of the EMT is to render aid. The job of a police officer who has hurt somebody, whether it's pepper spray, taser, is to render uh, or shoot them, right? Or physically beat them up is to render aid 
till the EMTs come. EMTs render aid all the way to the hospital. He tells his partner, don't do it. She's gone. That's a headshot. Even though on the video, he says she's still breathing. She's losing a lot of blood. She's still gasping a little bit. We got an EMS coming. You want to hand me another rag up there? Up there, to your right. Right there. Is there anything you can do before? No. Alright. I'm not even going to waste my med stuff then. I'm not even going to waste my med stuff then. I'm not even going to waste my med stuff then. So what are you talking about, Mario? Did you watch the video, bro? Like, did you watch... Did you watch the video? Like... Like... Just like you said, when people say stupid things, they should be told they say stupid things. You said a fucking stupid thing because you want to back up Tommy Sotomayor. You're a dumbass for doing that, right? So like I said, the man who didn't shot her, shoot her, his partner, was like, bro, what are we doing? I, I got to go get a kid. I got to help this woman. He's saying, oh, don't, don't worry about it. That's the headshot. She's done for. Yeah, you good, though? And you say this was a justified shoot. You say he shouldn't be charged with murder. You are out of your fucking mind. You need to go and do some soul searching, okay? Now, however, however, because I know there's some people, I know long video, I know there's some people that say, well, she did throw the pot at him. And again, like I said, I know the video's getting long, but I'm going to show you that video, right? Pop. She sets the pot down. Grabs the pot. Throws it at the cup. You can see the water splashing. Water only goes that far if you launch it. Here's reasons why she was well within her rights if she was, in fact, throwing that water. In my opinion, I'm not a lawyer. I could be wrong. Maybe my understanding of the Constitution is wrong. Sure. But this is what I look at it from. One, okay, her right to free speech. She could she could have been saying, fuck the police inside her own home. She could be saying, y'all, y'all, fuck you, fuck this, fuck what you stand for, fuck your mom. She could be saying all of that, right? I rebuke in the name of Jesus' protected speech is not warming a threat of death gun to the face or in fact death and is not a threat of violence it never has been never will be you are a muslim myron so if she was in her home and you know she was holding a bottle of water and she said Allah akbar and the police said oh you better fucking not nah. shoot you in the fucking face would you consider that a justified shoot would you say i was right would you say that constitutes a threat to get a gun to the face right as a as a mean of com means of compliance, complying to do what? Right? To put the pot down when you made no threats of aggression towards this person? That's illegal. What are you talking about? Police can't even do that on a regular stop if there's no threat. So what are you talking about? Okay. Two, her Fourth Amendment right. If you don't know what the Fourth Amendment is, go look it up. I'm not going to tell you. She was not under arrest. She was not a suspect. She committed no crime. Police drew guns on her over a conversation. The next step, had she not been shot, would have been arrest. But arrest for what crime? Arrest for what crime, Myron? What, what was the guns needed for? What threat? Did she take towards the officers? She never moved towards them before dr guns were drawn. She never cursed them out. She never made a threat. There was no crime being committed. Nobody was in danger. So that was a violation of her Fourth Amendment right. Her Ninth Amendment right was also violated, right? She has the right to move about her own home, boil water in her own home, do and say whatever she wants in her own home. Again, if you don't know what the Ninth Amendment is, go look it up. I'm not going to tell you. So, yeah. And then number four, Illinois Defensive Dwelling Law Statute 720 ILCS 5-7-2 allows residents to use force in defense of their dwelling if they believe such force is, is in 
is needed to stop another person from attacking them within the dwelling. That's what the law says for Illinois. So if she in fact believed she was under attack from a visitor in her home of lethal force, she was obligated and allowed under law to defend herself and her home. Now, whether that applies to a police officer, I do not know. However, he was not acting in his official capacity when he pulled a gun on her for saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and putting a gun in her face. That's not legal. That's why he's being charged right now. So in my opinion, he was acting above or out of his legality of the badge there. So I believe that's that that stands in that position. And since she's not under arrest, since she was never under arrest, never under suspicion of a crime, the officer threatening her with violence and death is beyond the scope of his authority with no crime committed. Making it an imminent and unlawful threat, her actions, if she in fact was attempting to throw water on this officer, would be fall under the castle doctrine, in my opinion. Now, you can say, oh, castle doctrine doesn't, doesn't apply to police officers. Why the fuck not? Someone tell me, why the fuck not? If they're not there in a legal capacity or they're operating uh, no longer in a legal capacity, who the fuck, what are you talking about, right? Let me give you a scenario. I know I said earlier I wasn't going to give you guys any situations, but let's say you invite some police officers into your home and they start attacking your child. Are you just going to let them attack your child or are you going to defend your child, right? When your child has not committed any crime or nothing like that, you're just going to let them start beating your child up, shoot your kid? Probably not. So I believe that, in fact, the castle doctrine applies. Right. So according to the standard ground laws, you are able to retreat when safe to do so. The officer could retreat. She could not. The officer could retreat. She could not. The officer could retreat. She had nowhere to retreat to. So at the end of the day, Myron, it's your platform, your voice. You have a right to say what you want to say, feel how you want to feel. However, as you say, when you say stupid things, you should be held accountable and you should be told you're saying stupid things. Myron Gaines, you are saying stupid things. In fact, that's not even your real name. I apologize if I butcher your name, but Amru Foodie, you said something stupid and you need to address it. And before I forget, I'm going to drop the video here to show you exactly what happened when it comes to her throwing the pot of water. So again, I'm going to detail what happened. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He said, you better fucking not. I'll shoot you in the fucking face. She said, I'm sorry because he pulled a gun out on her. She put the pot down. Her hands went up. She went down. He tells her after she's down, he tells her, put the pot down. But she's not holding the pot. So she goes to pick the pot up, I guess, to put it down. Again, as I said earlier, she's in an altered mental state. Who knows what was going through her mind? She's being shouted at by two men. There's two guns being pointed at her. She went to go put the pot, uh, pick the pot up to put it down. He advances on her as he's saying, put the pot down. I'm sure she got frightened. And in her mind, she's trying to put the pot down. And then he shoots her and takes her off this planet Earth. You're going to see that here. And I know you probably watched it a couple of times. But we're going to play it again with the context as the people on Twitter saying she did, in fact, throw the pot. She threw the pot. That's why he shot. He was making demands of her to put the pot down after she put the pot down. And after he shot her, he was still telling her to put the pot down. This man is fucking insane. So as we could see from the video, when she, once she said, I'm sorry, she put the pot down. She looked at the gun. She covered her head. She put her hands up and covered her head basically with both her hands and dug down. She was not able to see the cop. While she was doing this, they were telling her to put the pot down. She looked up and went to get the pot to put it down. When she looked back, the guys were closer to her with two guns in her face. She was frightened. So instinctively, she tried to get rid of the pot, which was causing two men with guns to approach her with the guns at her face while they're screaming. So 
instinctively she tried to get rid of the pot and then that led to her being shot she was not from if you watch the video she was not trying to throw water on the officers because again she put the pot down put her hands up and ducked down she said i'm sorry ducked down after she put the pot down she did not have the pot in her hands and the police was telling her to put the pot down she looked up to get the pot to put it down they're closer she got frightened now she's dead because of these overzealous cops one particular grayson who is now being charged with murder he deserves to be in jail point blank period anybody who says otherwise has no idea what they're talking about and or they're racist and or they hate their own kind period or you just lack common human decency and you don't understand what the legality of the situation is or what police can and can't do period y'all be blessed Roll the darn production we just made it after insane sight of my silence But it hit my features wide and leave you shook outside yourself Like just off topping like a dude all by my house Remember how you did me, I remember this is heavy The incentive for the check, AB how I leave it in the field Level with you niggas, bring the table chairs, blow a bed I'm not settled in my nigga like a magic trick I make it look real easy nigga, hook, line, seeker Rhythm in my hustle nigga, that's how I street truck Creeping, running with the mob, classy popping off Temperon, Benny Siegel now Knowing damn well that this type of attitude will make my mama frown Mama smile, we don't make it out alive so I can't let these niggas slide around.